Hello adventurers, it is I, Condominium Gandalf, with a series I like to call Kato's Countdowns. In this one, for the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, we'll be counting down the strongest two-handed unique melee weapons. That includes greatswords, warhammers, and battle axes. This countdown doesn't stop with the stats though, since guides are my thing, I'll be showing you where you can find them as well. Now let us begin with the best crown-crushing, heart-hemorrhaging, body-breaking, unique two-handed weapons in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. If you are here for two-handed swords, the Blood Skull Blade is unfortunately the only one on the countdown. But this does also mean that you have some decent base damage and the naturally faster swing speed of great swords over other two-handed weapons to make it that much better of a choice. The Blood Skull Blade's base damage is 21, and surprisingly doesn't really have any attachment whatsoever to Daedric Princes, but might have an enchantment that will make them a bit jealous. The Blood Skull Blade will throw out energy blasts when you use power attacks with it. The blast from your power attacks with the Blood Skull Blade will go about medium range distance and then dissipate, and that's among one of the first things you get to test out when you acquire it yourself. This energy beam can penetrate enemies and walls, and among the best parts of the Blood Skull Blade is that it doesn't use any magical charges whatsoever, so you don't have to worry about recharging it because it always has this effect. On the not so great kind of downside section of the Blood Skull Blade, there is no scaling with this weapon or its enchantment, so the energy blast itself deals 30 damage but cannot be increased or decreased by anything. However, the beam itself is just more of a addition or bonus to the damage you're already dealing. So you use a power attack on an enemy at close range, you're doing your base damage as well as 30 on top of it with the energy blast. There are a couple more things I learned about the Blood Skull Blade that weren't apparent immediately after picking it up, like the energy wave being blocked by ward spells, but also being able to detonate rune traps. It can interact with hanging lanterns that drop down, but cannot with pressure plates. One particular thing I enjoyed was using the Become Ethereal Shout, because as long as your regular attack doesn't connect, you can continue throwing out the energy projectiles without breaking your ethereal form. On the topic of upgrading, you can upgrade the Blood Skull Blade with a Silver Ingot and the Arcane Blacksmith perk at a Grindstone. But likely thanks to the Blood Skull Blade's unusual nature and mysterious origins, it does not benefit further from material-based smithing perks. Overall, it is a fun greatsword to use, and that bonus damage is bonus damage. Stack it with poisons, make it real crazy. I'm not trying to tell you how to play, but it's fun with poisons too. Anyway, the location of the Blood Skull Blade is in the Dragonborn expansion. Once you take the boat from Windhelm to Solstheim, along the cliff face nearest to town will be the Raven Rock Mine entrance. Crescius Corellius can be found arguing with his wife inside, and if you choose to engage in dialogue with him, will eventually begin the quest, The Final Descent in which Crescius asks you to find out what really happened to Gratian Corellius, his great-grandfather, who was lost in the mines years ago. The mines eventually open up into Blood Skull Barrow, and you will discover the Blood Skull Blade, and many things to test it out on, including the elaborate door in front of you. Here we are switching it up to Warhammers, and the Dawnguard Runehammer is a fine example of one. It is a unique Warhammer with a base damage of 22, and is yet another unique weapon with a unique effect or enchantment, depending on how you want to look at it, as well. Bashing with the Runehammer will place a magical rune on the surface you're facing. This is a fire rune that will deal 50 points of fire damage when it detonates, and its trigger is enemy proximity, like fire rune spells usually do. This is really awesome because instead of converting Magicka into a Fire Rune, you're instead using the stamina from your Bash attack to create a Fire Rune. Like the Blood Skull Blade, no Soul Gems are needed to recharge this weapon either. I consider no extra maintenance a huge bonus. The runes do appear to count as destruction magic because it will level up your destruction magic skill too, when enemies detonate them of course. The rune master perk can also be used to increase the distance in which you can place these runes by bashing. So this is ultimately a nice package of a powerful warhammer capable of bashing in vampires heads quite effectively, among anything else you would call an enemy of course, and the ability to cast a rune spell without needing a free hand. One of the many nice things about the Dawnguard rune 
Rune weapons is that they are under the Steel Weapons umbrella. So you need a Steel Ingot and the Steel Smithing perk, as well as Arcane Blacksmith, and you'll be able to upgrade the Dawnguard Rune Hammer on the spot at a grindstone. I don't know if I have to specify that. So the location is kind of given away by the name of the weapon. This is the Dawnguard Rune Hammer and can be retrieved in the Dawnguard expansion. In order to gain access to the Dawnguard Rune equipment, including the Rune Hammer, you will need to join the Dawnguard when you have the choice between them and the Volgahar Vampires. Join up with Isran's crew, and once you retrieve the Moth Priest and bring him back to Fort Dawnguard, Serene Gerard will suggest that there is another eccentric personality that Isran will definitely benefit from, and that would be Florentius Binus. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. After you retrieve him, he will add to the absolute pile of radiant quests you can do for the Dawnguard. And because it cycles between these characters, it's probably going to take you a while. When Florentius does ask for you, he can send you for lost relics three separate times, and one of them will reward you with the Dawnguard Rune Hammer. These are radiant quests though, so I will also advise you bring patience. <laughs> Another unique Warhammer, simply thrilling to use and also part of one of the expansions for Skyrim, is the Champion's Cudgel. The base damage of the Champion's Cudgel is 24, and along with its unique looks, it has a powerful enchantment on top known as the Chaos Enchantment, which is a 50% chance on strike for each element of fire, frost, and shock to deal 25 damage. This is a 12.5% chance of all three going off at once and dealing 75 elemental damage. Even though it is possible to find it on other weapons, you can disenchant the champion's cudgel if you see fit, but of course, as you disenchant something, it will destroy it. So if you're not someone who uses war hammers, you will have that enchantment available as soon as you acquire this to add it to weapons that you do use. Disappointingly, on the upgrade side of things, the Champion's Cudgel cannot be upgraded at a grindstone, so the damage you get is all going to be based on your own character's skill and bonuses through enchantments that boost it. But something worth mentioning about the Chaos Enchantment itself, the Fire, Frost, and Storm Enchanter perks in the Enchanting Perk Tree will boost the damage that this enchantment puts out. The bonus appears to be even higher if it's on Stallroom weapons for some reason. So there is another way you can improve the Champion's Cudgel without necessarily needing a grindstone and going all in with the elemental damage instead. This is still a charge-based magical enchantment, but unlike the similar enchantment that the Dwarven Black Bow of Fate has, it doesn't appear as though you'll have to spend nearly as many soul gems to keep it charged. Overall, there's just a lot of fun to be had with the random factor enchantment on your weapon that just adds to the damage. So now for the location of the champion's cudgel. General Carius carries this, an Imperial general thought to be long dead. To get to him, you'll basically trip over this quest trying to explore the rest of Solstheim after you've reached Raven Rock. Stepping just outside to the south of Raven Rock, you will encounter Captain Veleth fighting off some ash spawn. Speak to him about finding out where they came from, give Captain Veleth the clue you found, and then you'll be sent immediately to take care of General Carius inside Fort Frostmoth, a fortress to the southeast of Raven Rock. Take him down, and the champion's cudgel is yours to wield, or disenchant for that sweet chaos effect. If you're looking for that middle ground between slicing and smashing, I give you Wuthrad, the first battle axe of the countdown. This battle axe is somewhat of a legend among the companions and was wielded by Yskrimor during the Nordic Falmer War. The base damage of Wuthrad is 25, and it has one singular effect, perhaps even mission, and that is being deadly to elves. When Wuthrad is wielded against Altmer, Bosmer, Dunmer, and Falmer, it appears to have a 20% damage bonus. I mentioned that this is an effect rather than an enchantment because the Elemental Fury Shout can be used along with it, increasing the momentum of the swings by incredible speeds. Because it is an effect rather than an enchantment, you don't have to use Soul Gems to keep it charged, but on the upgrade side of things, this is a unique weapon, it doesn't really have a tree that it belongs to, and it cannot be upgraded at a grindstone. 25 base damage is still decent, and if you go all in with a two-handed character, you can keep up with the game scaling in enemy levels. Now for the process that is a acquiring Wuthrad. Probably the easiest way to say this is just join the Companions in Whiterun. If you take a trip into Yorvaskar, which is right next to Dragon's Reach, you will see the fragments of Wuthrad hanging on the wall behind the stairwell. After you join the Companions, this will be your main overarching kind of quest, is getting the rest of the fragments so that Wuthrad can be reforged. 
Once you hit Glory of the Dead, it will finally be reforged by Yorland Greymane, and he will hand it directly to you. At this point, you would have been the one who did most of the work anyway. <laughs> That's the point where you can decide to just leave the questline as it stands because you have the battle axe, or continue it till completion. Before we get to the most powerful unique two-hander, I'd like to mention a couple that didn't quite make the list. The first one is the Rueful Axe. This was by my own choice, actually. If the Rueful Axe did turn out to be part of the countdown, it would have pushed out the Blood Skull Blade and no Great Swords would have been mentioned. And ideally, I want to have one of each type of the two-handers included in this countdown, so that's why I went that route. The main thing that the Rueful Axe has going for it, besides its base damage of 22, are the gnarly wolf head designs on the blades. But that's really the only good thing I can say in confidence about it because this is the slowest weapon in the game. Anything else on this countdown will be better than the Rueful Axe in the way that it performs. Yes, the Rueful Axe can be upgraded to the grindstone and it comes with a stamina drain enchantment, but I believe your time is better spent getting literally anything else on this countdown. And the final reasoning for not getting the Rueful Axe, if, if there's an argument at all anyway, would be that the Rueful Axe is one of two choices for final rewards for Clavicus Vile's quest. This quest is called A Dater's Best Friend, and you can start it from Falkreath by speaking to one of the guards about a lost dog. This lost dog turns out to be Barbus, Clavicus Vile's companion and other half of his power. You can either return the axe and get the mask of Clavicus Vile, which does count as an Daedric artifact, or kill Barbus with it, keep the axe, and forfeit your chances of finishing your Daedra Hunter achievement. It's disappointing that a battle axe that looks so awesome can be outperformed by pretty much everything else. Speaking of, the second omission is the Steel Battle Axe of Fiery Souls. This one's a bit easier to explain. It's a Steel Battle Axe with a one-of-a-kind enchantment. But you can disenchant this Battle Axe and place it on whenever you want. The enchantment in question is Fiery Soul Trap, and this is a combo of Soul Trap and dealing 10 fire damage to the target. If you partner this with the Chaos Enchantment mentioned with the Champion's Cudgel and have built up your enchanting to max, you can have upwards of 4 effects going off at once from a single weapon. And that is just beautiful as enchantments go. The Steel Battle Axe of Fiery Souls is found inside of Iron Bind Barrow. It is southwest of Winterhold in the mountains. If it is your first time there, you will meet Salma and Beamja, two treasure hunters that will accompany you inside. After reaching the final room of Ironbind Barrow, the Steel Battle Axe of Fiery Souls is resting on the back of the throne that is facing the Dragon Wall in there. Be aware that it can be knocked off the throne if there's a lot of explosions going on. Now for the most powerful, unique two-hander in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, it is... Volendrung. The Daedric Warhammer deals 25 base damage, the same base damage as Wuthrad, but it crept up a little higher on the list because of its ability to be upgraded with an ebony ingot at the grindstone as long as you have arcane blacksmith. It doesn't get any boosts from Daedric Smithing, however. But upgrades are still upgrades, and it comes with an absorbed 50 points of stamina enchantment, which, for anybody who wields two-handers, is useful. That means you're regenerating more stamina as you're hitting your foe with power attacks that cost stamina. So it could be an endless cycle of just power attacks if you like, as long as the weapon still has charges, of course. Even though this is one of the better enchantments to have on a two-handed weapon, absorb enchantments tend to have a pretty high cost when it comes to magical charges and needing to recharge the weapon with filled soul gems, because Volendrung is going to be hungry. Probably the best benefit to Volendrung, even if it doesn't have any magical charges, would be its swing speed. It swings faster than any other Warhammer and is more akin to the speed of a greatsword. So you have the crushing damage and stagger of a Warhammer and the swing speed of a greatsword what's not to enjoy. So we've better locate it right now. Volendrung is a Daedric artifact granted by the Daedric Prince Malakath. In order to retrieve this incredible weapon, you will need to head to Lorgashbur. This is an orc stronghold in the Rift, southwest of Riften. The first time you come across Lorgashbur, they may be under attack by a giant. Help them out, or don't, and their shaman Atub will approach you. See if you can help, and she'll request that you bring back a Daedra Heart and Troll Fat. The Troll Fat's relatively easy to come across. The Daedra Heart, on the other hand, probably best to check with local alchemists, because Dremora that can be slain are pretty few and far between. Return to Atub with these ingredients, she will ask you and her chief, Yamars, to take part in the communion with Malakath. Yamars is a bit of a coward, and ropes the Dragonborn in to assisting him in going to the Giant's Grove and taking care of Shagrel, a giant who has defaced one of Malakath's shrines. Your methods here don't matter, because Yamars ends up dead anyway. Return to Lorgashbur with Shagrel's hammer, and it will be transformed into Volendrung before your very eyes, and you can snag it while the orcs are none the wiser. So I'd like to know from you, what is your two-hander in Skyrim of choice? And do you have any countdown suggestions? If you found this countdown useful entertaining your both, please do whatever you see fit to show that. And you know 
what to do if you want more like this. Thank you to my patrons on screen now who keep this channel going, specifically Wasteland Legends Fen. I'm Kato Genesis. Thank you so much for watching, and may you wander Tamriel like you own it.